In this video, we are going to discuss about oats, its types and its different parts. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end. Let's begin with the origin of the word. The term oat is derived from the Greek language which means to sing. So basically, oat is simply a lyrical poem but it is not that long. There are two important features that you should remember about odes. The first is that there will be always an intense emotion conveyed through an ode. The language will be imaginative and there will be intense emotion. But the whole structure of the poem, there will be a formal style and a seriousness in the tone to it. So in short, we can say that an ode shows personal elements in a formal style. Coming to the subject of the poem, it usually glorifies an event or individual or even nature. If we take an example, the Ode to a Nightingale is an ode written by the poet John Keats. Now the poem shows intense emotions, sensuous language and it glorifies the nightingale. But in total, the whole poem is a very thoughtful poem. It shows the temperance of life and the permanence of art. Before moving into the types of odes, let's just see how odes originated. Now it was in Greece that the poets started writing odes. That is, the poets in Greece started writing poems in order to congratulate their heroes, the winners of their competitions. Thus originally, odes were written in order to celebrate the victories. So these odes were performed in public accompanied by lyre, it's a musical instrument and dance. Later on what happened is, the English Romantic poets started writing odes during Renaissance. And the first known odes written in English were Spencer's, Prothalmian and Epithalmian. Here are some examples of odes. Now we will move on to the types of odes. Mainly, there are three types of odes, Pindaric Ode, Horatian Ode and Irregular Ode. First, we will discuss about the Pindaric Odes. It is obvious from the name that Pindaric Odes follow the form and style of the Greek lyric poet Pindar. Pindar is also considered to be the one who created this form of poetry, that is Odes. As discussed in the origin of Odes, Pindaric odes were sung in public events to congratulate their heroes and these were performed by a chorus and accompanied by dancers and musical instruments like lyre. Now, there are three parts to a Pindaric ode which are strophe, antistrophe and epode. Let's see what each of these parts are in a minute. In the strophe part of an ode, the chorus chants a stanza repeatedly and in the next part that is antistrophe part it acts like a reply to the strophe that is if strophe gives out an idea the antistrophe gives a counter argument to the same idea and in the epode the chorus summarizes and concludes the whole theme of the poem. In the earlier times when odes were sung by chorus these chorus followed a pattern while singing the ode. That is, one part of the ode would be sang by standing on the left side of the stage and then they move to the right side or the opposite side of the stage and the final conclusion is given by standing at the center stage. The next type of ode is the Horatian ode. These odes follow the form and style of the Roman lyric poet Horace. First, let's see how they are different from the Pindaric Odes. Firstly, they do not follow strict rules like the Pindaric Ode and these Odes were not meant for public performances because they focused more on personal topics like love and friendship. The third type of Ode is the Irregular Ode which is also called the Cavalian Ode. This Ode is named after the English poet Abraham Cowley. These types of odes have even more relaxed structure and so the poets who write irregular ode have great freedom and flexibility. So that's all for this video and if you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel so that you will get more of these videos.